Hi, I'm Greg. And I'm Just Steve. Hi, Just Steve. <laughs> Welcome to Blend of the Dead, and this is Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to another week. So Derek, say hello. Hi. He is getting ready for a little dinner party that we are having this evening. So he is not going to participate in this video unless he just yells random shit out, which he might. Um, but uh, this week, me and Derek have been heavily into Baldur's Gate 3. So this ties into Steve's love of D&D. Yes, it does. So, Steve, what draw? What do you like about D and D? Well, the first time I played D and D was with my college roommates back in the early Steve days, and I think initially I thought it was too nerdy, so I didn't want to do it, but I did it anyways. Um, and then, which, by the way, sounds like a classic Steve. Movie. Yeah. And after, uh, after kind of the ice was broken, I think the, in, the most interesting thing to me was, I'm used to playing video games, and I love RPG video games, and which Baldur's Gate is one. But my problem with video games mostly is that like, the number of different things you can do is inherently limited. Mm. Like there's everything that the programmer thought of, and then that's it. Yeah. But um, even though, like, you know, obviously the visuals for D&D aren't as nice as a video game, um, what I do like about it is that because it's actual people running it, you can literally do anything or try to do anything anyways. Sure. Um, go anywhere, you know, whatever. And, you know, most DMs that I've played with are cool enough that, like, if you come up with a really cool idea, they'll just let you do it. Yeah. That sounds good. That's, that, that totally makes sense to me. Um, yeah, and I mean, for me, I played D&D in my teenage years. Probably not, like... Like, we didn't have, like, a regular D&D night or anything like that. But, you know, I had a friend and a couple other friends that were nerds. And we would play it during lunch. Or that or Magic the Gathering. So, I was a big nerd in high school. No wonder I get laid. Uh... I mean, not the fact I was gay and didn't fucking know it. Um, <laughs> that'll do it too. But, you know, I digress. You know, I did play it in high school, but I mean, I've never really touched back to it. So Baldur's Gate is kind of like my first delve back into the D&D world, which is very cool. But I think you're right. I mean, they have, granted, the game has a lot of options, uh, but you're right, it is limited in what you can actually do. And any game will always be limited, yeah. unless, you know, they make like a constantly updating live game. But we'll see. Yeah, that would be, that would be tough. But, so, in, I, I so when he, when, he, when he's watching, you, right now he's not playing it, he's more or less watching me and Derek both play it. Which, would you say, how would you say mine and Derek's play style is very... Hmm. The biggest difference that I've seen so far is that you are obsessed with doing things differently than Derek. <laughs> well, here's the thing. It's funny because me and Derek compare notes after we do different parts of the game. And I don't necessarily do it intentionally, but I end up picking different outcomes than Derek. Like... Yes, sometimes if I know Derek has, if, if I know in advance Derek has picked something, I try to pick the opposite just so that I can see what the the, the different outcome is. Um, but a lot of times, even when I don't know, I still pick the opposite to what Derek is. Maybe maybe it's because subconsciously I'm thinking Derek would probably pick this, so I'll pick this. I think you're more exploratory too. Yes, you tend to just want to explore everything, and you wind up places where. Either you're not supposed to be, or you're not supposed to be yet, but you still got there. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. That has happened a few times when I've been playing. And I mean, I like the whole uh, dice aspect too, because I, I have a little bit of a gambler nature. Mm -hmm. So like, when you know, when I have a chance to shake, to roll the die, and it's like 15, 
And I'm like, yeah, let's take a chance, you know? <laughs> you might get it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You're not really given a choice. You have to roll. Well, that, this, is, <laughs> this is true. You do have to roll. But depending on which one you pick, they have better odds, right? Yeah. I don't necessarily pick the best odds ones. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, my friend Kim today brought up, uh, you know, possibly doing a D and D campaign in the future. I'm like, mm, that's a possibility. The, uh, the wheels are now turning. So well, we still never ran the Wendy's D and D campaign. We don't even have Wendy's to go what, to now. What character would you be in the Wendy's campaign? The big Son potato. of Baconator. You'd be son of Baconator? Yes. Is that a thing? Yeah. I think I'd be the spicy chicken. I'd be, uh, obviously I'd not have to be the big potato because we need a healer. <laughs> <laughs> but of course I'd be the DM, so. Yeah, there you You'd just go. be left on your own with no healing. I mean, that is true. That is true. Well, I mean, maybe Kevin would be the DM. Who knows? Oh, then I could be the big potato. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in real D and D, what is your what is your character build that you like? Mm, well, I mean, I like to try fun different options. Um, I would say it's been a while since I put a real D and D campaign. Um, but I think for role playing, probably the easiest thing to do is to do like a paladin because A, it's easy ish to fight, and from a role play angle, paladins are very driven. Like, they have this holy mission that they're on, and it makes it easy to push the story forward in a meaningful way because sometimes when you're just like a bunch of rogues and bards the whole party's like you know what we're not even go on a quest we're just gonna sit around in this bar and try to swindle people out of their money <laughs> yeah but yeah. you throw a pound into the mix and it's like no we must smite the cultists <laughs> <laughs> um what was it so steve actually picked my build in Baldur's Gate because I knew you'd like it because he, he knew what my pro, like what my he knew my personality and what I would like and I'm, I'm loving what he picked the but, wild magic sorcerer yeah it's the wild magic sorcerer like just that random wild magic spell sometimes it's great and sometimes it's like oh are you fucking kidding me mm -hmm. like the large enlarged thing that was yeah in your most recent fight yeah. all the enemies and party members on the map which there was like I don't know, maybe 30? Yeah. We're all either randomly enlarged or shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a mix, even on my team, like some people enlarged, some shrunk. Yeah. It was, yeah. But sometimes it's great. Sometimes you turn into a giant bear or you, yeah. you get an extra magic spell or... Yeah. You never so know what you're going to get. You never know what you're going to get, right? Um, but yeah, so it's been, it's been a, I, I've, I've had a lot of fun with the, the build that he, that he picked for me for sure. All right, I think you want to add, Derek? I just, it's the its the game of Libra. It's polyamory and bad decisions. It really is. Polyamory and bad decisions. Oh yeah, and the, the, whole, the whole aspect that basically every character that you get on your team is a possible romantic, mm -hmm. uh, romantic, uh, I guess I'm looking for a relationship. Interest. Okay. Interest. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Complete with jealousy and everything. Oh, yeah. Complete with jealousy and everything. I already had... And I, I didn't even do it on purpose. Like, I just had two of the guys fighting over me in the game. Oh, sure. You did that by accident. I, I did! I, oh, I actually wanted to... I wa I was like, I'm going to do opposite what I do in real life. And for I'm those gonna, of you, for those of you who have the play game, they just released a new patch where if you go to camp... And you take all your characters' clothes off, you can see the genitalia jiggle around while they walk. <laughs> Is that why you did that the other day? You knew it was a patch? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Derek did this yesterday, um, and uh, the jiggle physics is real. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and on that note, talking about jiggle physics, um, yeah. What do you think? Anything else? I got some jiggle physics right here I need to take care of. <laughs> That's what New Year's resolutions are That's for. That's what honey. New Year's resolutions are for. Um, 
Well, everyone, I hope you have a great week. Au revoir. Bye.